properties to take up, uh, starting with the uh, net profit line. And I'll start out at the very beginning of the meeting, rather than doing it with every case. Everyone who's going to be testifying about, about any appeal tonight, please raise your hand. Do you, and that includes you, Mark. Do you solemnly affirm, subject to the pains and penalties of perjury, that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? All right. Thank you. That's okay. That's okay. Okay, so everybody should have the packets in front of them. In the first place, we're going to discuss 7 Hillside Avenue. Um, reappraise a contract for set an initial value of $172,000. Uh, property owner attended the informal and formal grievance. No changes were made. Uh, the home is on a sloping 0 .08 acre lot on Hillside Ave. Um, when you get to the record cards, you will notice that there is a topography adjustment made. Uh, so there is a negative adjustment made to the land for the slope. The neighborhood is considered an early fair neighborhood. Um, the dwelling itself is built around 1900 and is rated as fair condition. Uh, we have that measured as 1,012 square feet of finish above grade, one full bathroom, two bedrooms. The home is rated as an average quality for build. Three comparable sales. Um, these, these three sales have similar challenges as far as um, access or condition. Um, as you can see, the, uh, the assessment of the, of the subject property uh, in fair condition is $169 per square foot. Um, that does fall a little bit above the first two due to the, the size difference. Um, you'll notice that the, the subject property is quite a bit smaller than the first two. Um, so therefore, it's going to be a higher dollar per square foot. Uh, the third one I feel is the best as far as um, best comparison as far as condition, location, and size. Um, equity comparisons on the next page. Neighboring properties at 10 and 12 Hill is this the taxpayer have it? Um, there should there should have been a s nope. This one. I'm gonna unclip those. I think that's all of them. I can get okay, yeah. Yours should be just on the top there. There's there's several other properties attached to it. Okay. Um, the equity comparisons are neighboring properties at 10 and 12 Hillside. Um, these are superior in condition, but also bigger in size. Um, 6 Cliff Street is also uh, similarly challenged as far as, um, as far as access. So the $169 per square foot assessed value falls within um, the three um, equity comparisons. Um, and then on the back, you'll have the, uh, the record card, and you'll see that the, um, the appraisal company did get into the home and inspect it. And on that same, uh, the, the side with the Patriot symbol, the red uh, P up in the right hand corner, you'll see the topography adjustment down at the bottom for the, for the slope of the land. And on the back side, you'll see the fair condition of the property. Okay, any questions on that one? Okay. Okay. The floor is yours. Appreciate the opportunity to come before this group, and uh, in general, appreciate that uh, citizens in Montpelier and in Vermont have this uh, ability to meet face to face. Thank you. Um, I think I think uh, many of you had a chance to read the letter that I that I wrote to uh, 
John Odom on August 30th. Uh, I want to I want to uh, add some detail to that letter, just a little detail to that letter. Before I do that, I'd like to. Uh, I may have uh, I may have missed something. But I, I didn't get the, uh, the, the properties with which this is being compared. This is the first time I've seen this material. Is that what's happening? Yeah. Um, they go up to the appellants. The first, just the, in that packet, just the first couple of pages that are stapled together, that's, that's yours and lists the properties. The others in that packet are other folks' properties. Yeah. So, so th this is what is block. yours. And, and each witness probably should be given one of these, right? That's yours. So yeah, so you can see those properties on the front page are the ones, the comparable sales that this is based on. Um, I, I may be missing something, but. Yeah, those things have nothing to do with your case. Oh. Those are there. Those are for the next people. I gave, Our, I gave you a full bundle by accident. Yours is just the one. So oh, you've got the one in hand. These are for others. Well, uh, this is not for me. This no. is not. This does not have anything to do with my property. It is right. This is what. These are not the properties they to which not, my property was compared. They are not only the one that you're holding. Oh, see, I'm sorry. Hand. Okay. Um. Uh, let me uh, readdress my question, sir. Um. Is this the comparison sheet with the other properties? On the front, on the very front page, there's three. Um, your property's down here at the bottom, and then these are the three sales that we're comparing it to. And the address is on the far left. And that came to me early. I don't know if you got that a copy of it or not. I don't know. I get things out a couple of days in advance to folks that have emails for it, but it's only formally presented. Okay. It strikes me that it would have, in the best of all possible worlds, which is not the world we live in, uh, it might have been helpful to me to visit the properties to which my house was compared. Well, we can tell you that after you're done with your uh, presentation, we will appoint a three-person committee to visit your property. Okay and to look at other properties that are comparable. L let me, is it, uh, would it be an appropriate move for me to actually pay a visit to those comparable properties to see how the comparisons stack up? Or does that seem to be uh, not a step that would be recommended? Well, the committee will do that, but I don't think it adds much for you, would it add anything for you to do it? Um, my my sort of interest is to see whether the comparables are in fact comparables. Um, that was why I asked the question. Sure. You wouldn't mind if I walked by those properties? No. Okay. And all that information is on the assessor page on the city's website too, so you can look at um, the records that we have for all those sales. Okay. Um, I am. Uh, I'm a little concerned about uh, the steepness of the hill. Uh, that is the access point to my property. Uh, not just the fact that it that it, it is a hill, but that you know what is the grade, what is the actual steepness of that hill, um, and I will be trying to figure out how that works out in relationship to the properties that are comparable. Mm -hmm. um, the, um, the roadway itself leading up to my house, um, uh, I am not a professional judge of, of roadway safety, but I do note as a property owner, just as a property owner, with no special training. I do note that that road is coming apart. And uh, it, it, is a, it, is a, it is both 
Curiously enough, it is both a roadway and a walkway. And uh, it leads to a set of steps that were built by the city of Montpelier that leads people upstairs to uh, what is known as uh, Waverly and Cliff Street. And there are people using that, using the stairs and using uh, the roadway, the single lane roadway down, down a steep path in all weathers and up, and that roadway is coming apart. And the stairs, I'm not again an expert on the stairs, but I've taken a look at the stairs and some of, uh, and I've had some comment come to me from people who have used the stairs to say to me that they hope that somebody will look at the stairs as to safety, as to their condition, as to the wear and tear. Um, I, I, I'm going to speak to my situation, um, and I don't think my situation is unique. Um, I have a social security check, and I have another check that was a, uh, uh, a bequest, essentially a bequest from, from my aunt, but I got the bequest before she died. I it's called an annuity. I should jump in here and say that we're not consider, we don't have the power to consider the any taxpayer's ability to pay as part of this appeal. It's strictly based on the value of the property. So you really don't need to go into what your income is. Okay. Mary. Uh, May. There is a process, a separate process that you can engage in that has to do with ability to pay, but that's just not what we're able to do or consider here tonight. All we can look at is, did the assessor get it right in what can you tell us about his evaluation of the property, not issues outside of that? <coughs> But yeah, you could ask for an abatement yeah. um, if you're concerned about your ability to pay. That would be, we've got a bunch of those requests in, and they'll be starting a little later after these. But yeah, that would be the process for ability to pay. How would I know that if we hadn't had this conversation? Does everybody know that? Um, probably not. There are some people who approached me and spoke to me and were clearly a little confused, and I would direct them to one or the other, okay. or sometimes both. Um, let me, let me just, uh, by the way, you haven't also asked me to, I want to be, I want to be very much a follower of your rules, mm -hmm. and I'm not trying to be defiant. No. But I will say that uh, it would have been helpful in your introductory materials to have stated that uh, comments about income, comments about, are not taken up in this meeting. I would have... Uh, I'm a little embarrassed that I raised those issues. Well, that's no, no need to be. Yeah, and that's my fault. I should have. No, no, no. What do you say? I'm not trying to find fault. I'm trying to, I'm trying to respond to, to the situation. Mm -hmm. uh, but so the question really for tonight is, the the assessor has uh, come to a uh, to a certain value. Yeah. And it's based on the qualities, the characteristics of your property, including the location, the. Uh, neighborhood, the construction, the area, all that. And he's uh, set forth certain properties that he considers to be comparable uh, that, were, that would have been sold recently. Yep. And so this is an opportunity for you to point out why you think uh, he got it wrong in some way. Um, and I, see I, I, would, I, would not, uh, I would not suggest to the assessor that he got it wrong because I am not an assessor. I've not been trained as an assessor. I can only tell you how it strikes me. Okay. And so I don't, I don't, sir, challenge you in your professional abilities. I do think it would be helpful for other citizens who may be uh, affected financially by 
these changes to know that there's an abatement. I didn't know there was an abatement. I think it's great there is one. Um, I guess I'm going to conclude my testimony with uh, thanking each of you for joining me and others for this discussion and uh, for being so forthcoming as you have been. Uh, I thank you a lot. And I know this, uh, this, uh, these hearings come at a time when the city is facing other problems, and I'm acutely aware of that. Well, and I thank you all for your service yeah, to me well, and the city, well, of course. Don't go away. You're, you're, I, I thank you for coming in, and I see that we have at least one question. You're, you're on record in your letter of appeal of saying that uh, you think the property is too high based on the age, location, and condition of the property. And so we'll appoint a committee, and, and they'll look at those items. But there are uh, members of the board who may have oh, questions for you. Yeah, so can yeah. Happy to take hi. Can you, you mentioned the road deteriorating. Can you drive to your house? One car can drive to my house, yes. And there's one parking and There's place. one parking space. And uh, when you have to turn around, you have to use part of the parking space of your neighbor. And, you know, we're friends, so that's not a problem. Okay. In other words, I have to back up into my neighbor's uh, but parking the road space in order is, to make the turn to go down the, road the hill. itself is passable. Pardon? You can get up and down the road to your house. Yes. Okay. Mary, okay. were you raising um, your hand? No, I think I'm Okay. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions? Okay. Uh, yes, Sal. I have a question actually from Marty. Um, since the home is graded C, average, but everywhere else it says fair to average, that, those are different, right? Yeah, I mean, so the, uh, the C is for the quality of the build, mm -hmm. and fair is the condition of the property. I see, okay. Yeah, yeah Mary. Um, so, and I appreciate you haven't had a chance to study what the assessor has said to us, I assume you saw what we call the card, which is attached to that. And I'm just, do you disagree with any of the information that he's presented? For example, is the number of bedrooms correct, the number of bathrooms correct, that sort of information? Um, yes. Um, correct. Yeah. And, and so you wouldn't argue with the, his, the assessment of the condition, et cetera? Well, I, I did put some information, and I said they were estimates. I said, look, I need, a, I need some attention to the roof. I, I called around a little bit about the roof. I can't say that the estimates are uh, exact, but I, I did put in a, a number. Uh, the. Uh, The house needs to be painted. I called around to see what that would cost. I put that in as an estimate. Uh, when you say you put that in, I don't think yeah, we have it in front of us. No I don't have anything like that either. Pardon? Is that the ingredients? I don't have anything like that. No estimate. Well, we've had several. We've had. This is not the first. This is not the first exchange on this property. Yeah, and a lot of that should, um, if you look at the comments, um, you'll see that the, the, um, when the reappraisal crew was there, they did make note of the, the dated nature of the house, the access issues. Um, and that depreciation is where the, um, where the condition issues will show up. Um, the home does have higher than average depreciation. So this says there's a 41% Phys yeah. depreciation based on physical condition. Yeah, there's one full bath they're calling fair, so it's probably been um, 80s or 90s since it was updated. Uh, same with the kitchen. The kitchen is rated as fair, so it's, it's less than typical um, condition. Okay, so we need right. to do a commitment. Uh, right in the back side, we see the, um, the picture 
The one with the picture of the property here? Yeah. Yeah. Right here, Kim. Right in the middle of the page. I made an orange mark where it is. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Turn it wrong ways. Oh. <laughs> See the orange dot? Okay, thanks. Okay, so we need a three person committee. My volunteers, Carrie, Kim, and Sal. Great, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, so the committee will be in touch with you to uh, arrange a time to get over there. Thank you. Who's your committee? You, Sal, and Carrie. Thanks for coming in. I'm going to leave. If that's okay. Oh, totally. Yeah. Thank you. You're Thank you. wel you're welcome to stay, but we don't make people stay. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Miss out on this. Right. Uh, next up, we have William McNamara. Should I take the seat? Yeah. Why don't you line up? Cedar Hill Lane. Um, we had the reappraisal contract to set an initial value of three point one million dollars. Um, property owner did come to the informal meeting by phone, and um, the the formal grievance by phone as well. This is several buildings built in 1973. There are 36 total units with a total of 35,000 square feet. Uh, bathroom, bedroom counts are, are, um, are shown here, 36 bathrooms, 20 half baths, 108 bedrooms. The buildings, again, are graded as C for average for quality, um, but they are in fair condition, uh, so they have a little more than, than typical depreciation at 38%. Um, there is a small office unit, a little small office unit, which is given 45%, it's given a little higher depreciation. Um, the reappraisal contractor did get into one building. <clears throat> um, we've got four sales to compare it to, and we're breaking it down on a per unit, uh, per unit price. Um, the second one at 52 Northfield Street is most similar in condition. Um, it is also rated as a fair condition. Um, so you see that one sold at 91000 per unit. The subject is assessed at 87,000 per unit at its current value. Uh, any questions on that so far? Um, income approach on this project. It gives a value of 3.7 million. Um, as compared to the current assessment of 3.134 million. And did you get actual income and expense information from this taxpayer? We did, yes. Th these, are, these are obviously market derived. Um, their actual numbers are not included. Um, the equity comparables, these are all slightly better in condition. Um, but similar uh, large projects, and they're coming in. Their assessments are between mm -hmm. 95 and 125,000 per unit. The subject is assessed again at 87,000 per unit, given its condition. Okay. Any questions of the assessor? Um, towards the end, there oh. there is a little bit of information about the property itself. Um, it was purchased back in 2005 for 2.5 million. Um, it was listed for sale in October of 2019. Maybe it was a fishing expedition, but it was listed at 5.4 million, but did not sell. Um, attached are the cards for, see, there's four cards on the property. Um, which will have the condition breakdown, the, the unit breakdown, bedrooms, uh, square footage. It looks like one for each of the buildings. Yes, correct. Any questions? Uh, 
questions on any of that. Hey, Kim. I'm still concerned that if, if you don't include property taxes as an expense. Correct. That's how we come up with the cap rate. It doesn't seem to make sense to me. That is an expense. It is. It's, it's then incorporated into the cap rate. So when you're doing an assessment, you've got to put a value on the property, how much the taxes are going to be, because you don't know what the taxes are going to be until the property value is set. Once the property taxes are figured out, it's then moved into the cap rate. It usually um, raises the cap rate. Oh. So you do take it into account that way? Afterwards, yeah. But initially, we're trying to find out what the value of it, of it is before tax before the tax rates are figured. Okay. Any other questions for the assessor? Okay, Mr. McNamara. <clears throat> I've lived here long enough that I, I still call this place October Lane. <laughs> <laughs> um, I too would like to thank everyone for coming out tonight. Um, the, uh, I hadn't seen these, uh, these comps, but uh, one thing that jumps out uh, at me is the fact that they're all significantly smaller buildings. Um, seven units, nine units, 10 units. This is 36 units. It's my understanding that in, uh, in, in valuation, real estate valuation, that the, you know, the larger the amount than uh, based on a retail wholesale argument that the la <clears throat> the larger amount will knock down the um, dollars per unit and the a smaller amount of units will be disproportionately <clears throat> higher for example if this had two and three families on here the dollars per unit would have been 150,000 or something so i <clears throat> There aren't a lot of comparables, but uh, I, I view these comparables as, uh, as uh, not significantly uh, comparable, really. They're not apartment complexes. They are small buildings. Um, I assembled a, uh, a package, um, and I brought uh, three other copies of this, of this package, which um, I can uh, hand out to whoever takes the, uh, the case, or I can uh, give it to the assessor and he can uh, hand it out in any way. But I put together one page that um, I, I feel uh, has uh, all of the most relevant uh, information. The, um, the prior assessment was a million eight twenty six. This assessment is three million one thirty four nine. The percentage increase of the new assessment is almost seventy two percent. The average, from what I was able to calculate, um, the average approximate average percentage of all city properties and their increases from the last uh, reval to this one is 46%. So I think it's clearly uh, disproportionate uh, valuation, 72% versus 46%. Uh, it doesn't, uh, doesn't make too much sense to me. The, um, th there's two main approaches, uh, valuation approaches that are used, um, it's my understanding, um, for these types of properties. One is the uh, sales comparison approach. The other one, which it's my understanding is by far the most important approach, is the income approach. And um, it starts, the, the uh, income approach, as I've summarized it, starts off with the um, actual uh, profit for the last three years. And in 2020, it was 214,000, I'm rounding these off. Uh, in 2021, it was 261,000. And in 2022, which is the year before the valuation date, 
it was 275,000. So the 2022 is the highest of the last three. These, the, this, this is the profit as uh, computed under the questionnaire um, that the assessors give out. The profit isn't that really because there's financing on this property. There's a, there's, there's a large mortgage and there's, um, there's a lot of interest. So the, the, the profit is much, much smaller than this. But for valuation purposes, that doesn't include uh, 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 property taxes and mortgage interest, uh, capital improvements. Uh, those are the figures for the last three years, 214, 261, and 275. Would you do that slowly? Start that over again. Yeah, uh, 2020, um, a profit uh, of 214. Okay. And uh, 21, 260, 262, and uh, 2022, 275,000. So the valuation date is uh, April 1st uh, of, of 2023. So uh, we used the highest of the last three years as the profit to analyze with the capitalization rate based on the method um, that the assessor just uh, uh, described and explained. We were told uh, that, the, um, that the base rate, uh, so when you do the income approach, you take the profit and you divide it by the capitalization rate and that equals the value. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, and so there's no, there's, in my mind, there's no question uh, whatsoever about these problems. By the way, I've also included in my package the tax return, the federal tax returns for the last three years, which are set up a little differently, um, but in the end, the numbers are the same. Uh, the, uh, income and expense statement that I've uh, included in the package uh, is based on the assessor's uh, questionnaire. <clears throat> so we were told that the, um, uh, the base capitalization rate was 9.3%. And that was a special uh, capitalization rate. It was lower than the capitalization rate for other properties. Apparently, the capitalization rate for other properties was 10%. But since multifamily has been a somewhat favored uh, market uh, sector, uh, they have they brought it down to 9.3%. And the commercial tax rate, this, this uh, property is assessed commercially, not residentially, even though it's an apartments. The commercial tax rate um, that's going on right now, the, two, the 2023 to 2024 tax rate is 2.282%, 2.2082. So to get the operative capitalization rate, you, you add together that 2.2 and the 9.3, and you come out with 11.5082. And that's the capitalization rate that I believe is being used to value all the other all the other apartment pro, uh, properties uh, in the city. So you take that you take that 11.5 percent, and you divide it into the 275,000 of profit for last year, which is the highest of the three years, and it comes out to a little under 2.4 million. 2.4 million. And the assessor's uh, current assessment is 3.139. A few more. So I think that's the strongest evidence um, uh, for the valuation of this property. Uh, the sales approach, uh, we hired uh, an appraiser to look at all apartment sales in, uh, in, in uh, Vermont. You don't have to just stay within the city when you're coming up with comparables. And uh, we, we didn't use ones in Burlington because that's a whole different world. 
the values there are double what, uh, what they are in, in the rest of the state, uh, more or less. And uh, the um, comparables, which I have as part of my package, comes out to an average of 62,000 a unit versus the uh, 87,000 based on these smaller properties. And 62,000 a unit times 36 units is 2.2, a little less the, the sales approach, which I don't put a real lot of weight on. Uh, it's the income approach that's really, that has, that has the most weight here. Uh, and um, the average of those two is 2.3 million as opposed to the 3.134. A couple of other things that are um, in, in my package and uh, also on the summary sheet is as regards the sales comparison approach, it should be noted that the extremely high commercial mortgage interest rates as of the valuation date of April 1st, uh, 2023, had a significantly negative effect on the property's value uh, as of that date. In fact, it may have been difficult to have sold the property as of that date at even a greatly reduced price. There's, there's a freeze. There's, properties aren't selling. I mean, anyone that knows what uh, resi residential rates have done to the, the uh, single family uh, market, it's the same thing with commercial properties. Uh, they're, there's, they're just frozen. They, there's, there's a question as to whether they can even sell. And so as of that date, with, the, with those interest rates, uh, I think that uh, it would have been uh, difficult to, uh, to sell this at, at a fair price. A couple of other things I uh, brought along was, what does this all mean to the tax bill? Um, and uh, prior to this year, the tax bill was uh, uh, 50, Almost 58,000, 57,819. This year, with this new valuation, it went up by $11,405 in one year to $69,224. Um, this is a big property, but um, you know, after all the expenses are paid, the mortgage, everything. Uh, there's not a real lot left over. And to have all of a sudden an extra $11,400 uh, taken out of the, um, the uh, proceeds uh, every year, it's, it's not really sustainable. I should, I'll just point out to you what I said to the previous person too, which is that we're not addressing tax bills in, in these hearings. It's not, it's not part of what we get to consider at all. Okay. Uh, lastly, um, I wanted to um, point out that um, after the property was, um, was purchased, it was, um, the, the land was cut in half. It was, it was subdivided into three different lots. And um, originally it was about 16 acres, and now it's somewhere, it's, um, you know, a little over eight acres. So the property itself was actually, you know, is only one half of the property that was originally purchased. The other two lots are separately taxed and insured. They're just, they're just land. Um, and um, we don't have a problem with those valuations. But uh, this, uh, this subject property is only one half what was originally acquired. And uh, that's, um, I have three uh, separate uh, packages that it might make sense to give the three um, uh, committee people that, uh, that take this on, uh, or you can uh, handle it any uh, way, way you want. Thanks, and we'll have the clerk take one so the clerk can get it out to all the members of the board. Uh, <coughs> but thank you. Um, does anyone have any questions? Mary. I um, missed, you You made a statement as to what you thought the value should be, and yeah. I didn't get it written down. Okay, um, I'm proposing 2,314,000. Okay. 
9.94, as is shown on the summary sheet. And how did you arrive at that? I, I uh, although in valuation you don't necessarily average things, is my understanding. Um, the fact is that the income approach came in at 2,393,094. A little under 2.4 million. And that the sales approach um, was 2,236,895. So again, averaging isn't necessarily the way it's done. Usually, that's my understanding, rely more, especially in this case, on the income approach, would be, which would be about 2.4 million. But averaging the, the sales and the income approach uh, brings it down to that 2.314994. And that, that income approach, 2393094? Two, two, three, two, three, nine, three, right, that, that was arrived at by? By the capitalization uh, of approach. 11, of 115082. By dividing last year's uh, documented uh, profit uh, before you consider property taxes, interest, or capital improvements, or depreciation. So that is not the number we have here. It's uh, the number that I gave is two two hundred seventy-five thousand four hundred two. Okay. And if that's divided by the eleven and a half, then yep. you get to the two four. Great. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Thanks. Any other questions? Mary. You, you mentioned that you looked at comps from the. Could you just give us some sense of? The area that you looked at. Um, well, a, an appraiser actually did this. Okay, uh, Shelburne, Middlebury, Williston, Springfield, Rutland, Menden, West Rutland, Randolph, Fairhaven, Colchester, Johnson, St. Albans, Williston. So, so nothing in. I didn't hear an essential Vermont. I didn't hear Ferry, um, Waterbury. It's because they weren't available. Yeah. Okay. I'm just trying to get in my head what what was looked at. Um, and then I think I set a question for um, the assessor. Yeah. Well, let's. Yeah. Go ahead. Finish. It. Yeah. Anyone else have any questions for the taxpayer? I have a couple. Um, when I first started representing people at October Lane. It was a Section 23 project run by the State Housing Authority, although not owned by the State Housing Authority. And, uh, but even after that, uh, the use restrictions went away. It, I think it was still subsidized. And is that the nature of it now? Are there any subsidized There, units? There was one for a long time, but he recently passed away. And so uh, there are no Section 8s, as, as they call them. It's all market rate now. It's all market rate. We get as much as the market will bear because we've got a lot of expenses up there, uh, especially maintenance. It's a uh, uh, 70, it's a 50, 60 year old property, and um, there's things going wrong all the time. Okay, anyone else? Okay, Mary. Uh, I need to see. Appellant suggested that there was a different cap rate that we ought to be applying. And in one, I'm assuming that they, I've missed a couple of meetings, so I bet I've missed conversations about the cap rate because we've done, we've, I don't understand how, how why 9.35 versus 11.58. These are market derived from the sales study that the appraisal contractor did um, for the reappraisal. This is this is typical what they were finding for larger commercial properties. Is is nine point nine point three to nine point five, some as high as ten. But to answer your question, I don't I don't think I've been thinking that we should have a, a night where we have a seminar on cap rates and and yeah. doing uh, the income approach because I. I know that there was a time years ago when I was doing these appeals where I could 
lay out the whole analysis of income and cap rates and why one thing is right and another thing is right, and I'm not, I don't have that in my head now. Can I um, pipe in just? Yeah. With, with n normal, normally with capitalization, out in the market, when people put prices on property, et cetera, you, you don't do it this way. You pick out a cap rate, and the taxes are included in the expenses. Mm -hmm. And so you just take the, the, the net profit, including uh, property taxes, and you divide it by the 10. In assessment, it's a, it's a different it's, it's, it's a different method, but uh, the reason they do it that way is because the tax rate is a, is a moving target, and um, they, the way they do it is they have a higher cap rate, but a, uh, uh, a higher um, net income also. And so, uh, as the assessor, I believe, said, in the end, it's comes out the same, more or less. Yeah. But ass assessing valuation is different. And it is a little hard to understand, actually. Actually, that I understood, that we had the taxes in afterwards because we don't know what they are today. Until, until the valuation, I said, yeah, correct. Um, will you, will you re-explain, please, why you added the 2.28, I think you said, to the 9.35? <laughs> yes. Um, because, because of the fact that you're not including the property taxes okay. in your expenses, so your profit is artificially high, and the way you take care of that is you add in the tax rate. That is the, ta that is the current tax rate. If you multiply 2.2 times the valuation of any property on the grand list, that's the property taxes. So that's the formula that's used. We're, we're basically doing it exactly the way the assessors do it. We're not making up our own um, methodology. We're, we're going along with the way it's done. And, uh, and that's, that's why you add the tax rate to the base rate and then divide it into a figure that does not include taxes as an expense. And just so I, I have the numbers right, it's 2.2082, right? 2.2082 is the current commercial tax rate. Right. You were missing a zero there. I, I, was. yeah. I wasn't going to do the math and discover that then. <laughs> Rosie. So are you contesting the, the gross income or net income that are listed in the assessor's report here? Because those there, are very different numbers. Is, is, is just is picked from the market. It's, it's, it's not based on, on real so numbers. So that's not what the assessor said. The assessor said that these, the gross income, the vacancy loss, the expenses, the reserves to calculate the net income, that all of those came from information that you reported. These are, um, as we said with the Jacobs property, we take all of the, all the data that was given to us, including they did, they did provide income. It's all put into a pool. Typically, this is what a one-bedroom rent. Oh, this is everybody in Montpelier. This yes. is not specific to this property. Correct. Okay. Because I didn't understand that. Their, their financial information is um, proprietary. It's, it's confidential. It stays in the assessor's office. Okay. Correct. They did not but you chose to not make it anonymous and gave us that information just now. Yeah, from, from, it's my understanding from a taxpayer standpoint to have the actual information is the superior way to, I mean, it, this property uh, has, has a couple of expenses that are higher than normal. One of them is maintenance and the other one is management. It, there's uh, over 100 people that live there have, it needs a basically a full-time manager, uh, and um, the expenses of running this place are, are very high, and so um, the expense ratio is is in the area of fifty <coughs> percent, whereas some some a newer place would be more like thirty-five or forty percent expense ratio. So, to me, it's fairer to look at the actual money that this 
that this property has earned in the last three years, and then we use the highest of that, the most recent year. This, this is the actual numbers. These, it isn't some theoretical numbers. You'll notice that the expenses are pretty high in the reporting um, on the second page there, <coughs> if you remember the Jacob's properties at all. Okay. Any other uh, questions, Seth? Marty, is there any reason not to use the actual numbers if we have them? No. Um, I, 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 can't, I, I can't divulge them because they're, they're confidential, but if they're provided to you, then you should consider them. I, I have them. They're all, the, in these packages are the summary sheet, the actual income expenses, um, a, uh, an amen, a, a, a uh, amendment describing the maintenance, and uh, uh, the uh, comps that were revealed, and the uh, subdivision, and the tax returns. Well, but Sal, uh, Marty, you can tell me if you think I'm wrong about this, but I can think of some reasons to not use the uh, taxpayer's actual uh, income <coughs> expenses, and that is that that's all dependent on how this particular property owner manages the property. And so if we had a property owner who's bad at keeping apartments rental, then they're ba rented, then their vacancy rate would be higher. If we if they were bad at uh, collecting rents, then their incomes would be lower. Um, so there might be reason to, and, and since we're looking at what uh, a possible sale would be, um, they might be selling to someone, either, either selling to someone who's better at doing this or just selling it based on the, the median uh, rent commercial property owner. The information, that the, the numbers that are provided for me are what's supposed to rent for me. What it does rent for, it's, it's good times, bad times, these are expectations based on the market, correct? Uh, Lauren. Just this uh, income approach is new to me. Does the net expense include, like you mentioned that you have a m large mortgage on this property, does that no, subtract uh, it out? No, mortgage okay. interest is not uh, included in the expenses. And mortgage expenses are not included? No, uh, along with depreciation, property taxes, uh, okay. one or two other items. Thanks. <clears throat> and, uh, and you didn't go into this at all, As aside from pointing out that you, there, you've got some concerns about the condition of the property and, you know, I've, I know that, for instance, that the roads can be uh, can be challenging up there. Uh, but uh, do you do you dispute at all the assessor's uh, characterization of the physical condition of the property? No, it's in uh, it's in average uh, condition, um, which is what the COD says, and um, it wasn't that way when we bought it. Um, it uh, it's a, it's a lot it's a lot better with. We've put money into it uh, over the years, and uh, as for as for whether um, a different owner could um, have a better uh, income and expense statement, I, I highly doubt, doubt it. Uh, we've 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 had this for 16 years. We have uh, three professionals that uh, spend most of their time uh, managing it. Uh, we get rents that were are the most that I can imagine getting and uh, I can't I can't imagine a uh, someone doing better in terms of their uh, net income okay thanks <coughs> okay volunteers to be on the committee for this Mary Sal Tim do you want to do this I, I I'm just thinking that if your, your expertise might be valuable, but I know you're also very busy, so I'm trying to balance that. Me too. <laughs> no, that's okay. why, too. Yeah, I'll do this one. Okay, thanks. Good work. <laughs> do you, shall I leave these four packages with you? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. And, um, Part of, the, part of the process is to uh, go over and inspect the property. Um, 
I assume it's okay with you if the committee goes over there Absolutely. when you're not there. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not. Because you're down in Massachusetts. Yeah, I am. No, we have a, a very nice property manager, uh, and um, she'll show you anything you want. Great. Thanks is, a lot for coming in. And who is that in? And how do we contact that? Yeah. 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 Um, her name is uh, Rebecca. And um, maybe you don't want to say it out loud because I think we're going to be broadcast. Uh, yeah. Okay. But if you okay. Uh, email it to uh, probably to John. Yeah. 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 John. Oh, okay. Yeah. John Odom. Right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank th you. Thanks for coming in. So let's keep one of these in hand. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. Next. Well, thank um, you. Thank you all. Thank you. We have Justin Monty. Justin Monteith? I think he's here. Okay. It's not somebody I know, so it's fine. Yeah. Uh, well, why don't we just pass over it for now? No, I can't. For the next time, yeah. Uh, David Morris. David Morris? All right. Come on down. Okay, we are looking at the uh, 71 Berlin Street. We're skipping over um, Morris Yeah, we're going straight to uh, Morris at 71 Berlin Street. And I have the company. Oh. Yeah. What happened to Monty? Sorry? We're not pursuing our appeal? Uh, we don't know. We're going to skip okay. over them and John will try to reach them. Okay, try to track them. okay so uh, next property is at 71 Berlin Street, owned by David and Edith Morse. Um, the reappraisal contractor set an initial value of $82,900. During the informal uh, appeal, uh, Mr. Morse came in. The, uh, the contractor was not able to get in the initial round of inspections, um, but they did on the day of um, the informal the informal meetings, and an adjustment was made for condition, lowering the property to seventy seven thousand five hundred dollars. Um, the home sits on a point one two acre lot on Berlin Street. It's a one and a half story home built around eighteen ninety. Uh, the home is rated as poor condition and given a C minus um, construction uh, quality build. Um, the subject does show excessive wear and lack of routine maintenance, so the dwelling is given 74% depreciation for the physical characteristics, a 20% reduction in assessment for the uh, second floor is unfinished and a 5% functional depreciation for the foundation issues. Um, so they're giving it an 80% total, and, and I, those numbers don't match up, they, they don't add up. It's, there's, there's different ways to configure depreciation. So when you add 74 and 20 and five, it doesn't add to 80. Um, but overall it is 80% depreciated. Um, however, the, the property is lived in, somebody is living there. Um, not so. But he was the day you were here. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. So what we're doing is we're establishing value on April 1. Um, if he moves out afterwards, we'll talk about that for yeah. next for next year. Um, the three comparable properties are similar in condition and location. The, the subject property is on Berlin Street. Everybody knows how much traffic there is there. Um, matter of fact, it is given a traffic, uh, traffic highway traffic neighborhood designation. Uh, number 9 Berlin Street is right on the corner of Northfield and Berlin Street. It um, was an office building at one point, then it was a, an apartment. Um, that one sold at $53 per square foot, um, the sale price of $120,000. 14 George Street was a, um, a foreclosure in fair slash unfinished condition, sold at $95 per square foot. 196 Berry Street is another home with condition issues. Um, it sold in 2019 for $115 per square foot. 
Uh, subject assessment is $77,500, translates into $59 per square foot um, for assessment. Equity comparisons. 4.5, uh, four and a half Sibley Ave um, is going to be closest in condition. This is a place with no, um, no functioning kitchen, a, um, a bathroom with, it, it's, it's uninhabitable. Um, structurally, it's, it's standing, um, but it's in very poor condition. 11 Hubbard Street is a foundation only. Uh, it's a property that the, the, uh, the, the home burnt, so there is a foundation there. Um, and the assessment on that's $97 per square foot. Um, so you see that the assessments all kind of fall uh, right in line. This number fine. Oh, sorry. Oh, of course. Um, number 17, River Street. Um, that's a home that's in very poor condition as well. Um, and that one, the assessment is at $62 per square foot. Sorry. So I believe based on the sales, and the equity comparison, um, I think the assessment of $77,500 is fair. Um, and like I said, it was inspected by the reappraisal contractor, so there shouldn't be any issues with the um, physical characteristics of the lister card that you'll see, which is attached. Um, you'll be able to find the depreciation that the property is given on the, on the side with the picture. So that'll give you the, uh, the poor condition of the bathroom, the kitchen, and the, the different physical characteristics of the property. Um, you'll notice that the, uh, on the other side of the, of the property record card with the, the one with the P for Patriot, um, the land value accounts for Forty-seven thousand dollars, and the building itself is twenty-nine thousand seven hundred, which gives us a total assessed value of seventy-seven thousand five hundred dollars. Okay. Questions on that? One? Any questions for the assessor? Can you tell me where the land value is again? Sure. Um, the 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 side with the P, the Patriot, right up on the top. Which one, the land value? Land value yeah. uh, same as um, they have. They have. Um, they've tracked all the sales. There's a, uh, a land schedule. Uh, the neighborhood. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The Please. Takes takes into account the frontage and the traffic and yeah. So and off and on, we talked about neighborhood designations. Um, this one's designated a traffic heavy uh, uh, for you know for the main highway. So the, the unit price for an acre of land in that particular neighborhood would be $65,000. Um, if you go up on College Street, it's going to be $250,000. So it's adjusted down for the size of the lot. But one acre of land on that, in that neighborhood would start at $65,000. So if you look at the very bottom of that, of that card, Oh, where it says unit price? Yes. Is there a list of these neighborhoods with, with these price? With these yeah, I just, uh, not with. Um, like a map or something? I have sent <laughs> out the, the neighborhood designations, but there's no. Um, I'd have to look for the, um, uh, the the price per acre of each neighborhood. Tim has one right, right up here. But market value and assessed value are different, so sure. Tim's got different numbers in his yeah, head. Sure. Mm -hmm. and, yes. Oh, go ahead, Rosie. So because it's kind of a building lot is a building lot, it's, you're not just taking the, the full yeah. acre and dividing it because that would end up less than 47000 So it's, it's because they have um, 
0.12% of a whole acre that the value comes down to 47.84. No, but 0.12% times 65,000 wouldn't get you 47,000. Um, it's, it's a portion of, so a full acre would be 65,000. Right. And then there's and then there's an adjustment of six point one three. That's what I'm that asking. That I'm not about. sure exactly where that so comes from. There's my assumption is that when you said to us before that it, like the fact that you can build something there. Yes. Yeah, and then so there's also a, in the calculation summary they make other adjustments for um, lack of usability, the, the neighborhood itself. So there's that the adjustment of six point one three. Reduce. And and one question that occurs to me is: Is there uh, parking on this lot? Uh, yes. Okay. Good. Well, we'll get to you. But thank you. <laughs> Any other questions for the assessor? All right, Mr. Oh, Mary, or not? Well, I'm I'm a little stuck on the land value. So an acre in this area would normally be 65K. This is a tenth of an acre. Don't divide by or multiply by a tenth to get the land value. But there is some other way of coming up with 47.8. There are other, other calculations made on the calculation summary. There, there's a lot to it, and in I don't know exactly all of the adjustments that they made to it, but they can come to um, a property that's sloping or doesn't have parking. You know, they can make those adjustments in that um, in that 6.13 adjustment. Okay. And in the comps that you gave us, are they similar in Land size? Yes. Would that be, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you. Can I just follow up on that? Mm -hmm. I mean, these, these are adjustments upward. I mean, you were talking about they can make adjustments because it's sloped or it doesn't have parking. Those are negative adjustments. This is a, a plus adjustment, right? I mean, a, a tenth of 65,000 would be, you know, 6,500. Right. right, so they're, they're 47,000 is eight times that. Yeah, you've got water and sewer there, so they're making okay, adjustments so, for that. So is there a breakdown of what makes up that value? I mean, you're, there's a, there are several elements to the adjustment. Yes. All we have is a, is a number here. Do that I would have to look into. I, I don't know if there's, I mean, they're all there. I don't know if I can extract it from here. From the card? From yes. The card. So if we study the card, we can begin to understand. Yeah. Okay. All right. Mr. Morse, thanks for coming. Oh, thank you. Um, I typically begin my public speaking with a joke. And by the way, I was really intimidated following that first fellow who's got the voice of a moderator. <laughs> Man. I'm <laughs> sorry. What am I going to do with that? But uh, anyway, I joke. This property, I view as I do my AMC Hornet, which was um, a random collection of spare parts loosely organized around an oil leak. OK, now I describe the property. You, you have the copy of my, my grievance. OK, and um, uh, by the way, uh, we are, bu but it's right up against Prospect Street, which is straight down, and the water from there ends up in this, it's a dugout basement, uh, half of it's crawl space, and, um, and it's, you know, average is about five, five feet high, and it's, it's a pond every year, every spring and every fall. Um, so, uh, the, the house doesn't have a full bath, it has a three-quarter bath. Um, the, the depreciation on this card, 29,000, uh, like I, I said there, that truly made me laugh. Um, 
and on your second try after it, they started at 82, brought it down to 77. Uh, they failed to note the failed condition of the propane boiler. For three years, Lloyd's has kept that thing, Lloyd's Plumbing and Heating has kept that uh, gas boiler limping along and it, it's just done, it's over. There's no fix. It flooded this last time and it's, it's a 1980s boiler and um, you know, people would say, why don't you go to FEMA and I'm there. It's just not fair to my neighbors to try to collect a boiler off that thing that's, that was absolutely worthless. Anyway, so I can't heat it. My son has abandoned it. Um, and uh, I stuck a sign on it uh, this evening. I went and made sure all the lights still worked and, and it, it, it was, um, hadn't been broken into. Uh, and I put a sign there, for sale fixer upper, for sale by owner. Um, the exterior, the front and sides, very poor condition, back dreadful condition. I don't need to read this to you, right? right. You all can read that. Okay, uh, so, um, right, okay. Uh, <clears throat> I received a notice, and by the way, my mom's been dead about six years and my dad's been dead about 18 years. Um, uh, I received a notice from the City of Montpelier's Assessor's Office, uh, April 1st, 2020, and it said the previous value was 52,500. That had been, they, they'd gone up over 100,000 and I had, I had blown a cork and went down to, to, um, uh, anyway, they cut it to 52500 and it stayed there until uh, this appraisal, reappraisal in April of 2020. And they changed it to 27500 reducing it $25,000. $25,000, almost half. And they only had a three-word comment for why they had done that. Condition of dwelling. And that was April 1st, 2020. There has been zero improvements or maintenance on that house since then, zero. And so the deterioration of that 1890s estimated structure has been going downhill at an incredible rate. Um, and by the way, the Witham house next door which was a much nicer house. It had a full concrete lined basement, beautiful rooms, and then they passed on and that front beautiful porch, the double-decker porch there, it started to go and started to go and collapse and I guess the, the city made them tear it down and, and they just tore the building down. Well, before they did that, I had a handshake in the back room there that was the kitchen um, for, to sell it for 32000 and I left and seven minutes later the man called me back and withdrew his offer, which kind of bent my neck out of shape. But um, the furnace is done. I cannot heat that house. I have a couple of 1500 watt space heaters upstairs that I, uh, I I used to have four of them that I used to heat the place until the Lloyds could get there to fix the boiler. But, um, and uh, like I said, it floods every year. Mm -hmm. uh, now, as far as the upstairs goes, the upstairs stairs, as I described there, they are so narrow and so high and the railings are so pathetic and the upstairs guardrail are so pathetic. I had a very similar house in St. Johnsbury where I took it to the state appraiser on the appeal from 
the Board of Civil Authority, and he, he just discounted it. The second floor was gone because of the access. And by the way, their second floor was much higher than the six foot ceiling in one room and the six eight ceiling in the other with, with slopes on both shoulders. Um, I could add a little piece of humor here. Well, let's just keep okay. to the point if we could. Okay. It's been a long night for you. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I uh, look forward to, I didn't bring the pictures because three of you are going to come see it. Mm -hmm. So I spared you that. That basement is a nightmare. I, I got lights in all the rooms. It's, it's um, that back is really collapsing. Um, I would like to close by commenting that you people sent me two mailings on September 8th and September 20th. Okay, did you receive two mailings? September 8th, September 20th? Was Actually, I, I think I spoke with Marty. I got the second one. The first one well, was wait, got lost in the mail and it showed okay. up. Well, let's keep on, okay. yeah, on track here. Here's, show up. here's, here's why I, I wanted to say that. That first gentleman, the first mailing on September 8th was City of Montpelier Board of Civil Authority Rules of Procedure for Property Tax Assessment and Appeals Hearings. And on the second page, you got after your hearing, and then you've got abatement with a nice paragraph on how to get help with abatement. It says if you want to apply for abatement, contact your city clerk. Well, he just said he didn't, he was kind of late getting a it's one of you three to take going to see this gent, you could take him a copy <coughs> gently. Thank you. That's yeah. helpful. Okay. Good to know. So Got questions? Does anyone on the board have any questions for this taxpayer? Yeah. Mr. Morris, um, what would you say would be a fair valuation of that property? Uh, the twenty seven thousand. Okay. Uh, you said you can't heat it when the accessor went through it and said the house is heated with hot water. Is that the correction that we're going to make to the record? Well, the, the boiler was out of service. Okay. Well, this is as of April 1st, though. Not as okay. Okay. okay, that's my question. Right. right. Okay. Yeah, the, by April 1st, I believe that boiler, when was the flood? July. July, okay. April 1st, the boiler was still, still limping along. Him. Is the foundation in good shape? <laughs> no, no, the foundation is collapsed in the back. It's, uh, and the guy noted when I took him down through that there's a giant rock that that maple tree in front is pushing right into the basement and, and the whole front of the, it's, so the integrity at the front is, is very questionable. And the, at the integrity at the back is just non-existing. The, the, we put a, a plank up against the side of the house to hold the roof from, and the door is, has been refusing to close for a year and a half. Because, and I shaved an inch off it, and it still wouldn't close, the back door. Just sort of been putting a blanket in and shoving it. Do you think the house should be removed? Um, I think it will be removed. Whoever buys it from me, whatever they pay for it, I think it will be removed. Yeah. Well, yeah, land value. Would say yeah. Uh, they needed parking next door, and that's what that's why he was shaking his hand with me for thirty-two thousand. Okay. There are comments um, about the foundation issues that you're asking about. There's um, it's it's noted on the appraisal card. That it's very worn and dated, and it's tree roots pushing the foundation. Mm -hmm. well, I, I should ask the assessor. We have the taxpayer says that the, uh, uh, it's listed as a one bedroom, and he says three or a wood bathroom. And he says three quarter bathroom. Is that, has that been? It is. It is, three, it is a three quarter bathroom here. Okay. Good. Yeah. Thank you. And it is also on the. Uh, Quick question for Marty. Sure. 
we accept his testimony that the structure is not salvageable and the foundation is, needs to be removed as well in order to use the land. Should the value of the land be depreciated by the costs of clearing the land, so to speak? Yes. Yes? Yeah, it would have to, I mean, it, it would, if you're going to deem the home worthless, there's cost to take it off. Um, but there is value in the land itself. And, do we and, have and a like I said, as a the salvage? I'm sorry? What would it cost to take all this down and have I don't a buildable know. lot? I don't know. But this is, you know, like I said, as of April first, there was somebody living there at the time. You know, we're gonna have to talk about, you know, everything else if you don't sell it for the for the next grand list. Okay, we're gonna appoint a three person committee. I'm gonna suggest based on what you've told us about the property, that the taller members of the board should not volunteer. <laughs> and I promised to clean the cobwebs out of the basement. I already did the stairway. And that was enough. But anyway. So I'll volunteer to be on this committee. And Donna and Lauren, is that it? Sure. <laughs> I was going to volunteer. Yeah, but you can do it, I'm too tall, apparently. <laughs> okay. Do we? Does John have your email address? I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well. Oh, okay. I have his phone number on the record, if not. Okay, good. Yeah. We'll be in touch. Yo. Thanks. Good. I'm good. <laughs> My keychain. <laughs> yeah. Any buyers? <laughs> Not yet. Good night. Thank Good. you. Thank you. Okay, Criterion Corporation. Welcome. Thanks. Thank you. So this is 11 St. Paul Street. Correct. Uh, so we have 11 St. Paul Street, a three-unit building. Thank you. Everybody all set there? Can you remind us what name is under in the file? Uh, Criterion no. Corporation. No, it's no, Steve. No, it's Steve. Oh. Or Corpora or Porpora? Yeah, Porpora. P-O-R-P-O-R-A. Thank you. Sorry, uh, Rosie. Um, we appraised the contract set an initial value of $416,400. Um, property owners did come to the informal meeting. Changes were made uh, to the room count condition and some finish that was uh, missed. So it did raise the assessment to $421,100. Uh, there were no changes made during the formal grievance period. Uh, property is a, a multi-unit building on 0.12 acre of land on St. Paul Street. Neighborhood is considered early average. The um, property was built approximately 1875. It is three units with a total of 3,804 square feet. Property record card has four bathrooms, a three quarter bath, and seven bedrooms in the building. The building rating, as far as the construction, is C or average. Um, and it is given an average condition. Um, five sales of similar properties of three and four units. Um, they have sold between 121 and 195,000 per unit. Um, sales one, four, and five are probably most similar because they are also three unit buildings. Um, and they're in the 173 to 195 range. Assessment of the subject is 140,000 per unit. Um, no income was reported on this property. <clears throat> Equity comparables are pulled from within the neighborhood. Um, these are all two and three unit buildings, um, all in average condition. The assessment of the subject, like I said, is 140,000 per unit. Um, neighboring properties are in the 148 to 165 per unit range. Uh, so it appears to me that the subject property is equitably assessed at 421 
100. <clears throat> um, property record card, um, pretty standard. It has, you know, average condition. It's got the, uh, the room counts. Uh, depreciation of 33%. Um, bathrooms and kitchens all rated as average. And the, the land breakdown for the property. Any questions on this one? Yeah, Mary. That is correct. Um, could you not have used uh, the average or the standard throughout the city? We could have, and that's a question I need to ask of the uh, of the assessor because of, uh, of the, the reappraisal contract because I'm not sure exactly. Some some three unit buildings, um, I don't know if it's a size thing, but for some reason they did not use the income on some three unit and two unit buildings. Um, my educated guess would be that these are typically, uh, except for in this case, they're typically owner-occupied, which would skew the numbers. Um, so my, my guess, and, and I would have to check again, but my guess is because these are typically owner-occupied. And can you tell me what so the interesting question is what would have been the result if an income approach were used? Yes. Um, is there any way to understand that? I think I can probably plug the numbers in. Um, Mr. Krajewski is actually going to be at the next um, the meeting next week. And I, I, I can ask him that question before then. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Rosie? Would we be able to get that entered into the record if we find out about it later? I will check with him Monday and then um, email his response to John. He can then forward it on to whoever wants to the committee, or I can email it directly to you. And then the question really is, do we have the power to is that allowable? Yeah. reopen the record? <laughs> and I'm yeah. told that we do have the ability to do that. Uh, and of course, then uh, the taxpayer would ha have an opportunity to comment on that. Because otherwise, it wouldn't be fair. OK, ready for the taxpayer. Thank you. All right, you're up. Thank you all for giving us the opportunity to come in here. Um, you all have my summary sheet, so I know it's getting late, so I'll try to make this as quick as possible. Um, so I'll just kind of walk through this summary thing, and you can maybe stop me and ask questions if you had. Um, when we first got the reassessment, I did look for comps. I, I didn't find a comp right in my neighborhood that I thought was similar. I, I, I don't know about these comps. I will take a look at these. and. I'm sure they're, they're relatively, I see there's one actually on St. Paul Street, which is the street that my house is on, 37 St. Paul, which was 121 uh, per unit. Um, but anyway, I went about a little bit different way since I, I couldn't find the, uh, the comps. So what I did is I took my neighborhood and the way I defined the neighborhood is I drew a circle on the map literally around 11 St. Paul Street, and I looked at the streets that were encompassed in that, and then there were 69 houses. The, the streets that were in my quote neighborhood um, were St. Paul Street, my street, School Street, Cedar Street, and Loomis Street. They were all kind of around this. They're really my neighborhood. All those houses are very close. So there were 69 houses, including my own. So the way I went about it for the first time that I, I um, came before the, the appeal um, was I figured out the percentage increase of each of those 69. And I think you have my worksheets. Mm -hmm. It's handwritten, so, but I think it's pretty clear. Um, so I took it, the 69 houses, including mine, and I figured the percentage increase from the prior assessment. And um, I also noted that my house, since the last assessment, I haven't done, I've done routine maintenance, I've taken care of the place, but I haven't done any capital, major capital improvements, and I haven't 
done any additions. So it's basically the same it was at the last reassessment. So I thought that was pretty consistent. Anyway, so um, for the first appeal, um, I found that my house was increased 77% from its prior assessment. And the 69 house, the 69 other houses in my quote neighborhood, um, they were increased 61.97. The average of all the 69 houses was 61.97. And mine was 77.15. Um, so I went to the, I guess it was the first appeal was to the, your, your, the contractor. What's that? It was the contractor. Yeah, the contractor, yeah. the, yeah. Um, uh, whatever the name of that organization was. And I presented these numbers to him, and I, and I guess he, he didn't think much of my presentation because he then raised my taxes 420 to 421,000. He raised it $4,700, which kind of surprised me. But you sort of explained the reason um, why it was raised, but I, I wasn't told that. They missed something um, when, uh, let me see, they, whatever you brought in made them realize they missed three. They missed um, a bathroom or something? On the, uh, on the record card, they missed uh, 376 square feet in a rear section. Right. So it wasn't accounted for. Uh, uh, there was also a room uh, condition adjustment. So those two things, um, the additional square footage is what, what raised the okay. assessment. And, and since you brought up the, the square footage, and I mentioned this to that gentleman, I showed my square footage is 3,400 square feet, 3,372. But the contractor told me it was 3,800. And I, I brought it to his attention at that time. And I said, you know, I'll, I'll have the place remeasured if you want. And he said, he didn't really respond to that. So I show my square footage to be 3,400, and I think you mentioned it was 3,800, so I'm not sure. there is a discrepancy there. Um, but I'll put that aside. Let me go back to this, this, when they raised my assessment to 421. So when I went back and updated that worksheet that you see with the 69 properties, um, what happened then was, with the increase that he gave to me, my property, my increase was 79.1%. And at the same time, of the 69 properties that I have in that study, nine properties were reduced. So the average became 60.63 increase in the average of those 69 houses in my quote neighborhood. Um, so based on those numbers, my assessment increase was 31% higher than the average of all 69 properties. Um, and, you know, being that my, my, my approach to the whole thing was, being that my house was not, didn't have any material improvements or additions, that I would expect that I would be more toward, I'm not looking to have a bargain, but I would hope that I would be more toward the average of the 69 houses in my neighborhood. Uh, which was a 60% increase, whereas mine was a 79% increase. It just seems skewed to me, but um, that's about it. Okay. Any questions? So, go ahead, Mary. There is a factual question of what is the square footage? Right. Um, so we're off by 400 square feet. Um, for whoever the committee is, uh, do we run the tape around to make sure that we got, how do we figure that out? If there's a discrepancy in square footage, then that should be done, yes. Um, we we have done that before, yeah. We don't we, have those fancy laser measurements. I'll let you borrow mine. Oh, okay, that. we'll get a uh, lesson then. <laughs> the contractor did not get inside, so oh, okay. this, the information that we have is, is historical, and what they will do is they, every, if they don't get them to a property, they will measure the outside. Uh, it does get a little tricky when you know, you get inside apartments, you know, uh, measuring up the square footage of each apartment. But on the record card, you will see how much we have um, for 
the first floor, second floor, basement. You know, the square footage that we have are on the card, so you can measure it and then just match it to what we have on the card. Um, it looks like you got 3420 when you had the first floor and the second floor on the card. Yeah, and there's also some unfinished, um, the, the UAT, the 384. Okay. So that's, that's um, um, finished, finished square feet as well. If you look over to the right-hand side of it in the sub-area detail, mm -hmm. that UAT is now finished. So what's UAT stand for? Um, it stands for unfinished attic, but it is, if you look over to the right, has been finished. Okay, thanks. Well, and so maybe we can ask Mr. Pora, do you disagree? So looking at the card and the information that they're providing there, can you point out to us where the discrepancy is and, and how they, um, the measurements? Um, I mean, I, I have not, unless I have a tape measure to measure my building, I can't exactly figure, because I, I didn't see this, I, I guess I should have, but um, no, I mean, I, I, I don't know where the discrepancy is. But I mean, I had figured it out and no, I mean, I would have to measure it to answer your question properly, and you deserve an answer, certainly. Um, so evidently, some of us are going to go measure, so Good. we'll find out. Good. Um, and I just want to make sure I understood. So it was listed as an unfinished attic space, but in fact it is a finished attic space? Correct. And, and you agree with that? It is I, I'm, I'm not sure where that, where is that attic located and what? portion of the building. Um, they have it Because I didn't finish any, I, I didn't change anything from the last assessment. Yeah, and it could be something that's been missed for years. So, oh, okay. So that would be kind of part of the reason why your your, your numbers are different, your, your percent of increase. Because um, when they did the last reappraisal in 2010, that wasn't accounted for, so you were at a certain, so even though you didn't make any um, physical changes to your property, they found something that was different. Oh, okay. So that, that will skew the numbers of you know, everybody else is only going up here, you went up this much, that could be part of the reason why. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't, I didn't sit in on your informal hearing. I don't know what it was that triggered him to find that, but something something you brought to him made him realize that they forgot to account for that. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Marty, I remember you telling us at a previous meeting that there's somewhere on the card where you can tell if the previous uh, yes. assessment was based on an inspection. Um, on the other side, the side with the P mm -hmm. on the right hand side, there's activity information. Um, so you can go I back see. to yeah. August 16th. The contractor measured the outside and left a card. They did not get called back to go uh, schedule the inside. Um, there was a hearing change June, June 4th for the informal meetings. Um, and then a denial by the assessor on, on uh, July 24th. But then going down below that, uh, in 2010, there was a grievance and there was a change. And then 2010, measured left card. So it looks like, again, going back as far as 2010 at least, nobody has gotten in to see the property. Correct. To inspect it. And I've got a question that is always, people always want to know the answer to this. Um, when we're measuring <coughs> square footage, do you just stand on the outside and measure the dimensions of the building, or do you go inside and measure the uh, dimensions of all the rooms, or how? what's the correct way to do that? So the, the parameter is measured first, um, and then the second floor, you can't do that from the exterior, so the second floor apartments are gonna be measured interior, wall to wall. Right, so things like stairwell, is, is a stairwell area, is that part of the square footage? Uh, no. Right, okay. Hmm. No. Rosie. And then when we get to the attic, is there a ceiling height that makes it full square footage and under a certain ceiling height it's not square foot? It's In not my counted? world as an appraiser, it's um, four feet. Four feet. Yeah. <laughs> Which, well, so it's it's actually changed in the um, in the finance world with mortgages. Um, it has to be it has to be uh, straight. Anything that's not wide, I mean, it's 
it's irrelevant here, but there's, there are different measurements for banking as well. But so for, for, so for knee walls, that gets discounted. Yeah, walls, yeah. So can I, oh, sorry. Can mm -hmm. I ask the appellant, you, um, you, sa you gave us a number of uh, 3,400 square feet. Where did you get that number from? I got it from my original purchase, okay. my, my closing documents, and then in 2007, there was a barn attached to the back of the building that I converted, and I measured that and added that to it. The barn, I have the numbers in here someplace. Um, that's how I came up with it. I took my original, because when I bought the building, I think it was in 2007, Six, the barn was not converted, so it was just a two-unit house. And then in 2007, I converted that barn, made a two-bedroom apartment, and I measured, I mean, I, I figured it very simply. I just measured the barn and I doubled it because it's two stories. That includes the stairwell, but that doesn't matter. And that's how I came up with my square footage number. So I went from my original closing documents, I added the barn, and that's how I came up with it. I came up with 3372. So you know, maybe I'm wrong, or maybe my closing documents were wrong, but um, those are the numbers I came up with. Okay. Donna and then Tim. Well, along with the back side here, it actually gives square footage for the first floor, second floor, the basement, and the attic at the time. And so the difference between the two is the attic number. The 384 and his 340, 400. Yeah, so as um, Tim was saying before, the first floor and second floor add up to 3420. So that's pretty close to what you have. Um, and then if you add in the the, the finished, unfinished, added, added, yep. that's the difference of 384 feet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I'm not sure about the the, the, the the attic. I Maybe that's the barn that you were talking about. Oh, it's it. Well, so we'll, we'll get to check. Yeah, yeah, I'm confused about what they mean by attic because I, I certainly, anyway, whatever. Yeah, you'll, you'll figure it out, yeah. I guess. Okay, Tim. The only question is on the stairway, the stairwell thing, is really you're just measuring the perimeters. If there's stairwells in there, they're part of the square footage. It's supposed to be taken out. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I never knew that. Yeah, either. Okay. Any other questions? <laughs> Okay. What, what, how high ahead. is the attic ceiling? Is it four feet up, standing in the middle? Could you hit your head on the? I, I'm not sure what they mean. By, that's why I'm, I'm confused. I'm not sure what they mean by the attic. I do. In the main building, there's one stairwell, a second stairwell that goes up to, I guess what you would call the attic, and that was there when I bought the building. So there's a bedroom up there, and, and I know it has, you know, this type of arrangement, but it's just one room. So it's not like it's a gigantic attic. I, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm I can keep... show everybody on the, on the card. If you look at the sketch, uh -huh. the side with the picture. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Can I see that? Do, do I have that? You do. Oh, yeah. Okay, I see that. Yeah, that's what I was doing. So if you look at the sketch on top there, um, the section at the very bottom, it says UAT, SFL, FFL, BMT, mm -hmm. and in parentheses it says 384. Match that up to the, the, um, the building that you're looking at, and you'll see the porch on the front here, which matches up to the OFT on the sketch, which, which is an open front porch. Um, the third floor there on the picture is where that, um, that attic space would be. Okay, right in the middle there where that window is. Yeah, so on the sketch itself you'll see lines, and that's where that section is sketched out, and that measures out to 384 square feet. Right, so, so that, that window on the front... On the third floor. On the third floor, that's... The, the extra bedroom that I'm talking about is in the back of the main structure. The front, where that window is, that's not finished. Okay. Okay. That'll be something that the inspection yeah, the, look at then that, they can go up there and see it. So when you go the the third floor bedroom is if you look at the main part of the building, not the barn, the, the third floor bedroom is at the back of the building. So this is a picture of the front of the building. So it's not like it's the whole attic that is is finished. It's one bedroom up there. So I'm not 
part of it is finished. Yeah, okay. according to the sketch, it's 10 by 32. No. Well, that that's probably the whole attic. Yeah, that, that would be the whole attic. But that, that whole attic is not finished. It's just one bedroom. The, the front section, that's just attic okay. to my mind. Anyway. Okay. That's easy for That's why we have the process to figure these things out. Got Carrie, it. were you raising your hand? Okay. Any other questions for the taxpayers? Okay. Let's get a three person committee to do this. Can I do this? Yeah. Thank you. Rosie. Who's going to hold the other end of the tape? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someone gets to use the uh, electronic measuring thing. So, yeah. Uh, it's just a little laser, a little red laser. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody's going to have to crawl up in the attic, which isn't me, I'll tell you that. <laughs> and, and one more. And I found Donna was going. Donna was going. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. All right, Mariah Quinn. Just a trivial question. We talk about doing that laser in a hallway, and you have closets in that hallway. You don't include the space of the closets in your square footage. So I'm kind of still focused on bank work. With bank work, like Tim was talking about, usually you take this um, the stairwell out because it's not rentable space. So I got to double check on what is done here because in, a, in the assessing world, it would be different. Well, this is a hallway. I mean, when he actually, I remember him coming in with, and he was there quick. I mean, and I kept thinking, that closet space is phenomenal. He, who? The, 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 when the appraiser came to my place. Oh, oh. He, he came in so quick, it's hard to say that he was there. But he had his laser, and he was doing this, and I kept wondering about the closets because the hallway has these phenomenal closets. And one of them is a big <laughs> What's your address again? <laughs> I, 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 I went in and totally underappraised it because I was concerned about all the condos would be underappraised mm -hmm. and would mess up everybody and they wouldn't listen to me. So, so no, that's going to be reflected. No, I did hear you when you came in. And um, so the, the sales of the condos were, were three years. It's a three-year sales study. And what you saw is like the last eight months or the last year. But anyway, so, I was yeah. about to ask, my question was about the square footage. That's yep. all. I yeah. think it's a real understatement if you're not doing yeah. things that are behind those doors. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. all. No, that, okay. will, that will be included closets, especially okay. in the condo. It's, it's all. Uh, he never opened any of it. He did just. Well, we're not supposed to. Okay. You, in assessing world, you're not supposed to open doors and closets. So then you. you Bank work, you account. open everything. In, 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 um, in this world, you're not. Okay, so um, Mariah Quinn, not here. Gonna follow sure up with her. Okay. Well, that's weird because it's alphabetically in the order for tonight. I think. So let's try to uh, schedule her, and we can recess now early. <laughs>